Hello everyone. So, it turns out that flying reptiles had some sort of feathery covering, according to the groundbreaking study published in Nature, Ecology and Evolution Journal by uh, Bayou Jiang and his uh, co-authors in December 17th, uh, 2018. Now, I'm going to assume you know something about pterosaurs when I'm talking about this subject. If you don't, I'll start with a brief introduction and you can find out the other details by yourself. Pterosaurs were flying reptiles that lived at the time of the dinosaurs and became extinct with them. They were a third group of flying vertebrates alongside the birds which fly with the aid of feathers, as everyone knows, alongside the bats, which fly through membranes stretched across their finger bones, basically. And pterosaurs flew by a membrane that was stretched across their fourth and largest digit. It would be a bit like having an enormous uh, ring finger, the length of a ski pole, and having a membrane stretched between that and the other parts of your body and flying. So it's been assumed that uh, pterosaurs were somehow related to the earliest dinosaur ancestors and the general consensus these days is that they belong to a, a distinct group called Ave Meta Tarsalia which included pterosaurs and everything that led to the dinosaurs after them. But they are classified as being outside dinosaurs proper, okay? And so this new discovery reveals that a kind of pterosaur known as an aneurognathid, uh, this is like a rather hairy little frog with wings, uh, was covered with feathery filaments that were almost indistinguishable from proper early feathers. Now, before that, scientists knew that pterosaurs had some sort of furry covering, but this was usually called pycnofibers or pterophas. You know, it, it was thought to be a sort of just hair-like body covering that had evolved parallel to the feathers that were present on dinosaurs and birds afterwards. But it was always seen as being distinct from what the dinosaurs wore, you know. It was generally assumed that this hair-like body covering evolved twice, once in pterosaurs and a second time in what later became the dinosaurs. And, of course, dinosaurs have a few distinct kind of feather-like uh, integument in themselves too. But now, with this anurognathid pterosaur, which is once again like this frog creature with whatever, they discovered that it had like four distinct kinds of fibers covering its body. One was a whisker-like thing coming around its mouth. Another one was this kind of long, thin filament that branched at the top. Another one was this kind of filament that had branches in the middle and the fourth kind was basically something like a, a down feather that that's found in birds even today and this is very groundbreaking because it makes it opens a world of possibilities for uh, reconstructing pterosaurs uh, previously the method was just to you know dress them out with this mediocre covering of fur-like things, like this kind of basic hair-slash-fur-like substance, whatever. But it looks like now we can get pretty creative with our pterosaur reconstructions. And, uh, for example, to begin with, the very famous pteranodon, you know, the one with the big uh, crest behind its head. So, th these types of flying reptiles have very strange tailbones that have like these two forked uh, extensions at the end of a very short tail and it was assumed that these extensions anchored a sort of membrane that led to the animals 
legs. And of course, the extension of membranes, flight membranes in pterosaurs is a whole other area of controversy and speculation. And we have some distinct fossils, some very good fossils, but the jury is still out on whether it was structured the same way across the entirety of pterosaur art groups or not. But now going back to pteranodon and the fork-like tail. So, okay, the conventional wisdom had it that this structure was kind of an anchor for uh, some sort of unique skin membrane leading to the legs. But now that we know the kind of extend of feathery integument, it's completely plausible to have this tailbone anchor some very long uh, tail feathers just like the way we see in certain seabirds or, I don't know, other birds like magpies or even ostriches or lyrebirds, you know? I mean, you could, I mean, obviously the pterosaurs ha still have membranes, but elsewhere on their bodies they could have some crazy display structures that were practically the same as flight feathers in birds. So you could have also functional flight feathers too. I mean... The more developed pterosaurs did not have long tails, but maybe the tails were replaced by feathery tails, you know? This is a, a very likely possibility, and, you know, I'll just place my bet uh, saying I won't be surprised if something like this is discovered in the future. And another thing revealed by this fascinating discovery of feathers on pterosaurs is that they may change their position in the classification of the greater tree of life. Now, years before this, Robert Becker, the famous paleontologist, he's known for a very famous book known as The Dinosaur Heresies, and you can find more about him below the video description. So he wrote in The Dinosaur Heresies, he basically came up with a lot of extraordinary theories about dinosaurs, extraordinary for his time. And he just packed them all in one big book. And some of these theories were really sensible things, like the big, uh, long-necked, plant-eating dinosaurs uh, being actually more active and dynamic creatures, and they did not have to live sluggishly in lakes and rivers. Or that Tyrannosaurus rex could move about fastly, you know, the pteropod dinosaurs, the meat-eating dinosaurs could run, or that uh, birds were dinosaur descendants. Now, these are all conventional wisdom these days, but when this book came out, they were like, wow, heresy, you know, renegade paleontology, that kind of stuff. And another interesting detail in this book is that Robert Becker also had some pretty weird theories in this book, such as he classified both the long-necked plant-eating sauropod dinosaurs and the other plant-eating dinosaurs in a big group. Now, conventionally, these two groups were lumped apart, and I really don't want to get into the systematics, but long story short, he grouped all plant-eating dinosaurs into one major group called Pitodinosauria, which is plant dinosaurs, whatever. So now this theory has not been accepted uh, so far. But, you know, this is a whole other podcast in the making that I need to discuss Phytodinosauria with you sometime in the future. And he also had another renegade theory that has since then kind of languished in the dark, you know. And Robert Becker believed that pterosaurs were not some sort of weird intermediate crocodile-grade descendant of dinosaur-like things, but he believed that in the absence of all other evidence, pterosaurs were actually very small, meat-eating theropod dinosaurs that had evolved flight for a second time, before birds, coincidentally. Now, this discovery of feathery stuff makes Robert Becker's theory actually quite plausible again because i mean okay maybe something like a furry integument you could have that evolved twice okay but something like a tufted feather it's a rather 
complicated structure to evolve twice. So, you know, maybe the earliest meat-eating dinosaurs evolved before what we know, before the date we assume that they evolved, basically. And they could have given rise to the pterosaurs before diversifying on their own. And now this doesn't sound quite unlikely because really, I mean, these fur feather discussions, they're so bizarre. You know, in one point they discover weird things like this in pterosaurs. Other fossils reveal scale-like details in animals which most people assumed were feathery. So it's all a big mishmash at this point. And to make things even more complicated, proper dinosaurs, you know, like bird-like proper dinosaurs, had some feather-like structures that were completely unique. They did not survive after these animals became extinct. So in certain animals, you have things like very broad, confetti-like streamers that they are not exactly like feathers either, but they're like this big, long sheet of keratin. It's really bizarre. And a whole lot of other bizarre structures. So, if I was to make one safe bet, I would assume that maybe Becker was right. And pterosaurs were not flying reptiles. They were like proper early dinosaurs. Pteropod-grade dinosaurs, I would say. That evolved flight before the other branch of dinosaurs we know as birds. It's a heterodox idea, but, you know, this evidence supports that family tree now. So, I don't know, it's all very um, strange. Also, you could, like, go completely wild and may maybe you could say that actually pterosaurs evolved first and then all pteropods and the entirety of other dinosaur forms actually evolved from secondarily flightless pterosaurs <laughs> and then evolved flight again as birds. Now, of course, this is a bit of a like joke speculation, but, you know, you wouldn't be surprised that similar ideas about birds had been entertained seriously in the past. There was this one wild theory, I don't remember who proposed it or whether it was really serious or what, but sometime in the 90s people said, hmm, maybe birds evolved first and then all other ground-living dinosaurs evolved secondarily from flightless birds, basically. And then there was another theory within this variation that said that, okay, okay, dinosaur evolution and bird evolution progressed as we know now, but one specific group of extremely bird-like pteropod dinosaurs known as the oviraptors, the famous egg teeth dinosaurs. Okay, so those actually descended from early flying birds and that's why they have these weird, bizarre toothless beaks and heads and they have like really, really wing-like arms in some instances. And it's a whole like graveyard of bizarre theories like that. So now onto this scene comes this discovery of protofeathers in pterosaurs. Once again, to sum things up, this makes for some really exciting developments for the way we reconstruct these animals. Now that we know they had proper down feathers at least, you know, they were probably much, much more streamlined. Like we're talking about like bird-like, smooth, egg-like, polished. You couldn't, probably couldn't see their necks in some cases. And then... In other cases, they may have, like, have had like bizarre display structures. Now, this is the best thing about this discovery. So this discovery of bizarre filaments, feathers in pterosaurs, with this discovery now, it's completely kosher if you reconstruct a pterosaur with, let's say, a peacock-like display of amazing, bright, uh, eye-like feathers, you know. It's completely plausible. Or you could reconstruct pterosaurs with like these, there's a strange kind of bird with streamers growing out of its wings. It's still alive today, I don't remember the exact species name, but there's a bird alive these days. I think it lives in Africa. It's, it looks like any other bird, but from its wings emerge two enormous feathers that 
when it's flying, the male looks like it's kind of flying with extra wings. But the extra wings are actually two enormous feathers. So now, with this discovery, you could have pterosaur reconstructions like that. And it's just... I mean, I'm, I'm talking now facing a silent, dark, eerie sea view. And these kinds of speculative ideas, you know, with this landscape, they're really giving me a buzz, you know. And this is not the whole part of the deal. I mean, there was talk of scale-like structures being discovered on a very famous but undescribed pterosaur fossil a few years ago, or was it a decade? So according to this unpublished information, there's this one pterosaur fossil that has all the proper membranes and the furry integument, whatever, but on its shoulders, it has something like big lizard scales growing, you know, very strange. Now, if this discovery is indeed what it is claimed to be, and if you add that discovery of feathery things with now this current discovery of proper downy feathers on pterosaurs, they could be so bizarre, you and I couldn't even imagine. And, and don't even let me start on the big forms, you know, the giant airplane size Quetzalcoatlus or the Asdrachids or some of the other weird ones like the Moganopterus with the teeth and pew, you could really have a field day with these animals. So, and also, just to recap, the f presence of feathers may now seriously reshuffle the way we look at pterosaur evolution. And uh, I mean, it doesn't take much to make this leap of faith, but now I'm like semi-convinced that pterosaurs were not these distinct uh, proto-dinosaurs that evolved alongside dinosaurs, but were not quite dinosaurs. Even there was always something kind of mm, smelly with that theory. Now I'm much more inclined to believe that, yeah, pterosaurs were dinosaurs. You could call them proper dinosaurs. It's just that early meat-eating dinosaurs with feathers evolved a little bit before we imagined they did. That doesn't exactly take a leap of faith, not with this evidence at hand. So what do you think, guys? How would you reconstruct pterosaurs with this new information? The links to the paper are below, but it's behind the paywall. So I've also included a link to a popular news story that explains this discovery in summary, basically. And what do you think about the evolutionary perspective? of pterosaurs with this discovery and also just share with me any wild ideas you may have with pterosaur evolution because right now even if you make stuff up you know it may actually coincide with the truth we are living in a really wild area of dinosaur and pterosaur discovery and speculation and it's a good time to be alive if you're interested in these matters so without further ado i bid you a good night and i hope you are all having a great 2019. Bye.